kind of touching on a few um, subjects that is really important to the hip hop community, but I think one of them that we're not touching on that we like to skirt around because we are in Minnesota. Um, is there's there's a couple of different groups of kids when you're growing up. There's the kids that knows that <clears throat> there's this dude that's never coming down the chimney, and there's still the kids that think that he still might, right? So we have a bridge over this water we need to kind of get together because the kids aren't listening to the lies anymore. Yeah. So like what the brother addressed right there, I've been in the classroom, I'm in the classroom with the kids. They're annoyed and angry because we keep lying. So if we don't focus on the truth of the reality of where hip hop come from, why it used to be grimy, why the words that we said actually meant something and we're not twerking all the time. That wasn't what it was about, right? But the young people aren't getting the truth because we want to keep skirting over it. And I think that if you just decide to deal with the truth, there won't be the fear. So everybody's scared and tiptoeing around and don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. What's wrong with the truth? Freedom Freedom Radio. Radio. Freedom Freedom Radio. Radio. I just think it's important that yeah. we, we restate, like, why are we here and what do we ultimately want to get out of this? I think the main goal is to open the dialogue so that we can try to put together something collaboratively with the community and ultimately put on this specific event at the Fitzgerald that's happening in May with all of these issues in mind. Um, how should we think about this event and how should these issues inform what we do? And could you introduce yourself, like, what you yeah. do with your Yeah, I'm position? Andrea Swenson. I work at The Current. Um, I am a music reporter and journalist, and I'm co-hosting the um, State of Hip Hop show with Kevin Beaton here. Let's open things up. We got Dave over here with a microphone. Who has questions, commentary? All right, we're going to pass it. I'm going to pass it to you so everybody can hear you. All right, can we please pass it down? And then once you're done, just pass it right back. Thank you. Truth Maze, representing the pioneership of hip hop in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, this is a list of things concerning the involvement of NPR and the current and TPT associating any messaging around hip-hop culture within the black arts community in Minnesota. Number one, the lack of black music format. DJ, staff, producers, editors, writers, administration, executives, or targeted programming directed to the public interest concerns of the black community. The current and its parent organization of Minnesota Public Radio has less than five black staff out of an organization which employs over a hundred people. TPT and its mission to serve the public interests of the black community via television has the same disappointing staffing programming concerns. Two, the historical symbolism and significance of denied access and unequal treatment of black hip-hop arts promoters and the culture within Minneapolis and St. Paul clubs and other performance venues. Three, the NPR and its other media partners selected ignorance regarding the cultural context and broader, broader awareness of systematic challenges young black males face when demonstrating artistic excellence, i.e. the blues and Elvis phenomenon. We'd like to go into a thing called uh, Ain't No New Thing. It's uh, based on the fact that white people continue to, to rip off black artists. They continue to uh, uh, steal their material, their styles, the very cultural elements that make the black artist the outstanding artist and master of music that he has been. Um, it ain't no new thing to tell the truth that these things are going on. We point out. And, and, and when you look at it like that, then it's like this, you know, there could be something here. But, um, like, 
white people couldn't dig having their daughters go to no shows and cream over no black man wiggling on the stage. So consequently, they invented Elvis Presley and let him do it. So we want to get into that, call it ain't no new thing, and talk about some people, people. This is a list of things concerning the involvement of NPR and the current and TPT associating any messaging around hip hop culture within the black arts community in Minnesota. All right, this Pyrex coming from the Teflon Collective. Number four, a lack of cultural appreciation and proper documentation of the black community's foundational development of hip hop within Minnesota's musical and artistic community. There are artists that I am floored by right now in the hoods of this city that are never involved in these type of conversations or major stages or even given the opportunity to show what they can do. Number five, the urgency to create specific platforms of recognition and opportunity for young black hip hop artists to nurture exhibited talents and skills throughout the arts. Number six, a call to accountability in the African American community regarding the media organizational, political, social, educational, and artistic support to keep our stories and issues of the youth culture and its contribu contributions alive. Number seven, hip hop is a black art form. That was birthed out of the necessities created by the struggle and challenges of the inner city black youth from the South Bronx, New York. It is a story and culture that has traveled, impacted, and laid legacies in the state of Minnesota, also continued to do so throughout the entire world. Hip hop at its foundation and purpose has formed critical analysis of what artistic voices are in ongoing self-determination of African Americans' dual reality to exist as equal human within an unequal, unjust society. It's a challenge. We have our work cut out for us. Um, we have a lot of things that we've been thinking about already, Kevin and I, as we've been putting things together, um, just different uh, topical things, what do we want to include, what are we going to have time to include, what kind of um, dialogues and panel discussions could we open up in that setting and have in, you know, maybe a span of 20 minutes um, where we're going to hit that topic and then move on, which is a challenge, um, but we're up for it. What's up, man? This is Ron, better known as One Triclops, a.k.a. Our Galactus. Yeah, what's up? It's uh, Eli Kennis, Teflon Beehive. The purpose of our unified collective stand here today is to bring out the continued gentrified narrative of what hip hop is making up the state of Minnesota. Its main soundtrack being Minneapolis and St. Paul. In the month of February last year at Hopkins High School, a small group of black students faced a violation in their identified rights as having equal access to a safe school educational climate. A, the school-endorsed athletic theme known as Ghetto Spirit Day was allowed to function as an all-day celebration in the suburban, mostly white, school. Hey, hey, you a rapper, right? You a rapper, right? No? Hey, check out the gold chain. Damn, you kind of icy, huh? Ghetto Spirit Day was an activity where the white students dressed, dressed up in the most stereotypical images of fictional rap, rappers, evoking additional overtly racist co conversations that severed as a, served as a disrespect to the hip-hop culture. I'm from Chirac, Chicago. I'm from Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> Gallo Spirit Day was a tremendous emotional attack to, on our young black males trying to safely function in a school of the state where the educational experience has been documented as failing African American students and families.
This specific situation at Hopkins High School influenced a very small group of black male students. The protests are denied dignity, lack of protected school rights. The group of students organized a pre peaceful nonviolent demonstration of the disrespect to the hip hop culture and its negative influence imagery of the young black males. Ironically, the same group who laid the foundation of the culture. A decision was made to hang posters to reinforce positive messaging. The black male identity on the walls next to the other posted of the school spirit week. As a result of this incident, a local radio station that covered some of the initial news of Hopkins High School's Ghetto Spirit Day participated in a form of irresponsible and unethical journalism. The young black male students were unfairly identified as participating in negative behavior and noted without proper in instiga investigation that the black male students did something criminally wrong. That radio station was NPR. The Current is a media outlet of NPR. The same organization is now positioning itself as communications outlet of authentic hip hop and its contributions created in Minnesota. Um, I just got a quick story to tell and a comment. Um, let me see the state of hip hop. Is there any is there any current or NPR or TPT executives in the room? Decisions. Okay, one person. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm glad you're here, so you can hear this. Uh, this panel, this panel happens to be very diverse, obviously in its in its physical form. I wish I could say the same thing for Minnesota Public Radio or Twin Cities Public Television um, or the current staff. Uh, it's amazing that an organization that is a public institution that is designed to serve the interests of the public, which black folks happen to be a member of the public. Um, is having the audacity to me to authentic authenticate whatever the state of hip hop is yeah. in Minnesota and even talk about the history of it when Internally, in their organization, they have no black representation or no sensitivity besides a couple of staff members out of hundreds of people. That in itself is designed to look as very suspicious and like what you just talked about, uh, lends to, um, you know, being used as a commodity and probably used in a funding grant that came from the Minnesota Legacy uh, Foundation that people get money to do this. Talk about it now. So that's one thing. Now the other thing is, because I'm not just gonna be somebody older with you know two children up here talking about hip hop, but I, I happen to walk in that path. After party, after party is right down the street at the African Theater Cultural Center. All the black people in the house, keeping this motherfucker real. You know what I'm saying? Put your hands in the air. But let me direct this specifically to the youth. It's interesting that NPR and the current staff were familiarized with a situation at Hopkins High School that took place around this time of last year that resulted in over 250 mainly black youth walking out of school protesting their educational experience that started from a, a situation where there was a ghetto spirit day at Hopkins High School where white kids were walking around as a fictitious rapper kind of figure that basically produced a lot of racist conversations and irresponsible adult leadership in that school. Those two kids are actually in, in the building today. Now, the staff from NPR, there was staff from The Current that was notified about this situation. Fairly regularly I get emails or most emails, I guess. Uh, probably recently someone told me, they sent me an email saying, J hyphen R O C man. <laughs> <laughs> This organization, primarily with no representation of the community that understands these issues, basically criminalized these two young men 
for hanging up posters to, to dignify their own humanity, while the group of white students were able to function freely and present themselves as like a mock of what they felt black hip-hop culture was. Now, this is all from the organization that's supposed to do this community engagement right now and spin it back and authenticate what hip-hop is in Minnesota. I don't know how that's going to play out for you as panels, panelists or for us as community to understand how hurtful that was, not only to these young brothers at that school, but that school population and to basically black youth who founded this culture. I get the most respect, I got the second MCs all painted in that. Here's a put the down cross where I have lived. Listen to my fucking rhyme with the place to do. Sounds like it needs to be a form itself. And so before anybody's talking about, and, and you know, there was a picture, an image online, and that was one of the reasons why I'm here. There was a picture online, and we want to do this at the Fitzgerald Theater, and this, that, and the other. And it was basically all white kids. And you know, hip-hop did not start in Minnesota or anywhere else in 2014. So, you know, when we come together in, in, in atmospheres like this, or what have you, I'm, I, I just feel like I'm taking the mic too much right now, and I want to pass this to somebody else. And, and we can't keep it real with ourselves and look internally as a community and ask ourselves, black folks, how do we let this go down and not speak about it and preserve our culture and hold institutions and others accountable to tell the stories correctly? But then again, how can we... Uh, the majority white institutions that hold this public responsibility to be responsible to the people continue to do the same games over and over again and still continue to get support, even from the artists. The other thing is to throw out there, the word that I think needs to be on everyone's mind because it happens in this city a lot is tokenism. The idea that when you elevate a couple of artists of color, that means you can ignore everyone else. <laughs> And um, there's, there's one other thought I had, and... Talk and, about them kids at that school, how they felt. Yeah, the, well, how, how would you feel? I mean, and the question is, how would you feel if you have absolutely no connection to that person at all? You feel like you have absolutely no connection to that person at all. I think you're missing the connection that those two young people he's talking about happen to be dope hip hop artists. Yeah. That's right. where the connection is. Well, can they speak? Yeah, of course right. they can. They already did Stand outside. Up. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah. 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 Now speak on how that made the, how that situation made you personally feel with dealing with that. Oh man, you know, um, it was definitely a lot of um, a lot of stress for um, you know, it's like a wall built up against you in a sense, but it's 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 this um it's part of it's part of our design nature, you know. Like uh, we're designed to, to to deal with these type of things. I'm sorry, I'm not, I haven't been talking very much because I just want to listen to your guys' perspectives. I really value what you have to say, and I want this to inform the way that we do our work. And this is what happens almost every day as our culture is being used to sub subtly attack us, even though we're the ones that help with the foundation and ultimately the creation of it. And uh, we all know that this is wrong. What's happening, everybody? What's up, man? Peace, everybody. Um, thanks for putting this on. Thanks for it being an opportunity for us to come together to engage, uh, for all of us to be breathing in the same building at the same time. Um, but on some real, real, real shit. Um, and I'm first going to hold myself accountable for whatever it is I'm about to say, if I do fall short of what it is I'm about to say. But bottom line, I see too much separation going on 
between who has the names and who's, who just gets props for what they did and ain't on the scene or whatever. And if this is really about the culture, that to me means that we got some serious work to do and some maturity to move into to help move the culture on more healthy. That's just my personal perspective. The hatred, the hatred or the separation or the animosity, or whatever, shows that really we're from. And then the last thing, too, as artists, like being our own media, understanding that the city pages, the vitamin, and the current are not in any way like the be all end all. Like, there's a lot more we can do outside of that and building our own media structures, etc. But then again, I don't want to let the media off the hook because we can talk for a long time about how we can do better, but the media can also do better. I do not attempt to adjust your radio, there is nothing wrong. Hi, I'm Leslie Jamila, CEO of Truth Maze Productions. This is a call to accountability for all of us who profess to appreciate hip hop culture and specifically the ongoing struggle of young black males, not only in the collective arts, but also including the conditions that create artistic expressions based on the real life experiences of broken educational systems, juvenile incarceration, drug infested neighborhoods, youth violence, broken families, job education, home ownership disparities, homelessness, political and social organizational exploitation, and the promising intellectual genius of our young black youth that can still excel within these conditions and make music for Minnesota and beyond. Let's get it right. With that, we are organizing a collaborative community-based effort to highlight our cultures, our stories, and our youth to be enjoyed by all. We acknowledge NPR, the current, and TPT's right to tell their story, but we question the sincere understanding and attention to the details of the many lives that have been cut short or ignored in the pursuit of hip-hop's collective contributions. Saturday, May 10th, at the Fitzgerald Theater. An event is going to happen. It's called the State of Hip Hop. My grandparents watch TPT in, you know, Moose Lake, Minnesota. So we're, you know, with that in mind too, how can we make this make sense <coughs> to people who are not um, directly involved in the community while also honoring and giving an authentic view of the community? Minnesota's black community has shared its culture for years. It should be visibly included, if not told, and documented by those who authored it. It's a shame to all that it recently has been accepted by the identified public institutions of communications when it has become acceptable to the majority white youth who participate in it. The power of definition is in those who write the word. Listen, truth be told, I got the old news for new worlds. Living, you learning, or you crashing, you burn. Life ain't a game, but we still rolling the dice. You experience pain, we're one in the same type. Envision the time beyond a barrier, never have been able to find my true area. Is dying young, born, raised in a barrier, letting them bury us, and we ain't even breaking barriers. Cause we're from a city where the sun don't shine all the time Though we always find another way to way to lay Or ways to make a way We got the common goals though we never can relate See I just wanna taste The sweet vision in that new spit the crack Can it hurt I'm kicking up the little cool catastrophic Your manners I feel I gotta watch from no pandas Grabbing at that bamboo action Asking for trouble if you asking Well dog I ain't asking I demand the answers Questioning the government Neglecting and the covering the media distraction Detach the clutter before the world toast but I spread like butter almost like you can't believe it's not the other well homie this the ill the origins of illa accepted as a gift and elected imagination for breakfast we break fascination abyss that get clutched by the politics 666 the white hands of the rich no plan of reciprocal living conditions ditched in the radiate spread the hate gun play ghetto with a playground metal when a metal with a metal gets heated like a blacksmith schedule freedom 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 Radio. Yo, what's going on? This is Truth Mays representing the Pioneer Ship from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am hip hop. Yo, word, it's OG Pyrex, aka King Tuck, coming from Teflon Beehive. 
We in the Midwest, Minneapolis is what we do. You know, this is how the function go down. And uh, yeah, I am hip hop. What's up? This your guy Ron. I'm out here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, putting it down for the team. Just to let you know, I have been and am still hip hop. Hello, this is Divine Science, a.k.a. Mr. Samad, and I have and always will be hip-hop. Yeah, you know what it is. What's good? It's Eli Kennis. You know we out here in the Minneapolis, Midwest bound. Uh, you know, break fast coming soon. I am hip-hop. We, we are hip-hop! Hip That's what's up. Yeah. about us, and when I say us, I, I mean like the varied uh, types of artists from different communities that are speaking to different things that are, are personal to their communities. Yeah, man, basically, it's like the only way to patch up ignorance is with love. Mm. Oh, okay. And right. you hear him? It's about how race, class, and culture all intersect, and sometimes it's more, it's more complicated than just the, that simplistic notion which is really easy to push back against. <laughs> Influential creativity changing our paradigm, our generation, we're the next generation, you know, we, we, we gotta set examples out here, you know, we young brothers and whatnot. This is kind of what gets seen. They throw a couple of black artists on there and then feel like, alright, we did our piece there, now let's go back over here to Rhyme Stairs and Doom Tree. Right. When you look at me, I want you to see light. When you look at the sun, that's what I want you to see. So every foot, every step that I take, I gotta represent my people. Everything that I say, I gotta stand for. I, 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 I'm part of this fucking argument. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, to Google. What? Oh man, nah, 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 hold on, man. Minnesota artists eventually be postponed. Okay. They wrote a letter. They wrote a letter. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, let me, let me call, let me call this brother up on the phone, man. This is crazy, man, hold on. Yo, what's up, brother? Man, I'm just chilling, man. Take care of some business. Uh, I'm into the summer. Yo, yo, peep this, man. I was um, I was online, man. I mean, I'm I'm already knowing you know about the situation, but I'm online, right? And 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 the headline off of the situation off of there at the intermediate arts thing when we made the call. We are hip hop. I'm reading this headline and it says like some like hip hop leaders issue letter to NPR TPT call for a postponed concert, man. Okay, so what are these leaders? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't even know because it, it's kind of hard for me to call myself a leader. I just feel like you know there's a responsibility when we call ourselves people who understand and participate in the culture, so. I don't really, I don't really know about the term leader. I, I hope, I hope it's just like a, a thing that the, the newspapers put on cats. But I just, man, didn't, I mean, when we when we made the call, man, didn't you reach out to a whole bunch of cats though? 
Yeah, I reached out. I mean, I reached out to a bunch of brothers and like, man, do you just build on that whole leader concept? First off, it's like, man. I mean, the people usually make the leaders the leaders. You know, and to me, if you self-appoint yourself a leader, then to me, you're operating outside of people, and especially when it comes to black culture and you want to represent black culture and you're not even in touch with the people that embody the culture, then you're doing something, you know, that can be really taken the wrong way and ends up being the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I reached out to a bunch of people, and I'm just wondering, do... You know, do we need to wake people up a little bit more by showing them actually what it what it looks like when you're not defining yourself? You know, what that what that what what that'll look like on the shorties mainly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean <laughs> Yeah, because I mean it's a big responsibility, man, when we when we participate on any level in this hip hop thing, man, you know, because you know the obviously the people are struggling brother and we got a responsibility to be about the people and especially preserve the people's stories man but i you know what i think man i think it's time for a new black arts movement man oh it's definitely time for a new black arts movement i was just reading something on on the mayor baraka once again getting refreshed with that, you know, and looking at um, the need to even look into how it started, looking at the main premise that came together, yeah, and then once again, here we are, of the new, you know, black arts movement, and building on, making it spread all over the country, you know, making this a, a more, a, a larger thing, you know, in the worldwide community. That's right. If, if you, I mean, if people are leaders, man, to me, it's like you stand before, you stand before, not after. Yeah, 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 and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you basically, you basically let it be known by your ways and actions, and, and that's the bottom line, so you need to see the ways and actions and things, so yeah, right. yeah I'm gonna at you, bro. All right, man, I'm gonna hit you back, man. All right, too. Right, you was talking about the history. I feel like the kids now don't really know the history of hip hop, where it came from. Mm -hmm. Is it up to the artists from the past and the artists of now to teach the kids, mm -hmm. or is it up to the corporation? Yeah, you have an obligation because let me tell you, you didn't. Anybody who's making making it right now, you didn't get here on your own. Somebody right. else paved the way for you, just like I said earlier. So somebody paved the way for you, so you in turn got to pave the way for others. But you know what? You have to do it in the right fashion. Now, if you don't take the if, if you don't take the building blocks, the foundation of hip hop with you as you go along in your career, you stand for it to be taken over, and it'll tumble down right in front of your face. You know what right. I'm saying? What I'm saying? Fortunately, in hip hop, we we've, we've just been able to like kind of still be on that rebelistic cutting edge type of situation and marketing and business love it so they keep on promoting that but once soon as it doesn't become fashionable for them to make money for it they will replace you with the Beatles mm -hmm. or with Elvis Presley like they did with rock and roll you know what I'm saying that's another form of our music mm -hmm. that was stolen from us mm -hmm. rhythm, jazz, jazz rhythm and blues everything you know, so you gotta understand that if you do not keep the foundation, mm -hmm. next thing you know, the whole rug gonna be yanked from underneath <laughs> you. All right, and when it does, you know, don't come crying back to the pioneers. <laughs>